What's up, Mario from HVAB. In this video, we're talking about why things move around when you weld them. All right, so if you're like new to welding, um, even if you're not new to welding actually, this is something that uh, will catch you out at some point, still catches me out now, and that is uh, basically things bending, moving after you've welded it. Um, it's just part of the process of welding, it's something that happens. So what most people think is happening is that you're welding something, and then the heat from that weld is bending it, moving it, and while like there is a little bit of that going on, anytime you heat a, a metal, it, you know the molecules expand, it moves around. Um, when it cools, they contract. But if you to heat a piece of metal and then let it cool gradually, generally it goes back to the same uh, position. So the difference with a weld is that you're adding material that is hot, and then as that material cools, it shrinks and pulls on everything that you've just that you've just welded to, basically. So I've got a few tricks of uh, how you can sort of work around it and how you can predict what things are going to do once you've welded them. And if you don't have a fixture table to fix your stuff down, or you've got no way of clamping anything uh, to stop it from moving, then I've just got some tricks of how you can sort of weld it in a certain way to limit the amount of uh, movement you're going to get. So say this is a, a piece of steel, we're going to do a big fat weld straight down the middle that way. What's going to happen is the weld's going on hot, all the molecules are, are spread apart. As it cools, they're clamping back together. This length of the weld here is trying to like pull itself in that way trying to shrink itself in that way and it's also trying to shrink itself in that way so basically what it's, what it's going to be trying to do to this plate is it's going to be trying to pull it up like that, it's going to try and shrink it in because it's pulling tight, it's pulling on the edges and going to be like trying to bend this this way because this weld is shrinking that way, it's also going to be trying to bend it that way. So you could end up with a piece of plate that's bowed that way and that way, just from running a weld straight down the middle of it. Um, this is going to be cooling as you go, so you're going to have a, a, depending on which way you run that weld, you might have more of a bow at one end where you start, and it might have less of a bow at this end, so the direction you go is going to affect how it warps, how hot the weld is, is going to affect how it warps. So the, uh, the most common practice to stop something warping would to be to have this completely clamped flat to this table, run your weld, let it cool with it clamped down, once it's completely cool, unclamp it and it's not going to be warped. It is still going to move a little bit even, when you, even with it clamped to the table because there's still, as these welds shrink, there's going, to be, there's going to be forces still pulling on this plate, even though it's clamped to the floor. So you, you unclamp it, it's still going to move a little bit. So no matter how well something is fixtured, it will still have stresses in it, just from the force of the weld shrinking. So say this was a joint you were doing, you wanted this at a perfect right angle, you set it all up, you set it with your square, you're like, yeah, that's nice, it's all perfect. Buzz a few tacks in. So we've got our tacks on there. Nice flush fit up. And then what's happened there is it's opened up because because these tacks have shrunk and if you imagine looking at that, that, that if you were to draw a little line from there at the top of that tack to the bottom of the tack there and then try and tighten that line, that's what it's trying to do, it's trying to pull this, trying to pull this piece over that way because this, 
this this is shrinking down and it's pulling pulling this piece over that way if you were to run a weld all the way along this um, you would get that but even more extreme one little trick you could use to get around that is that's pulling that up as it's cooling and shrinking so if you can get two tacks on here quickly spin it around before it's had a chance to cool and shrink and blast another two onto the back you know you're counteracting it you've, you've fixed it both sides it can't move so much the other trick you can do you can basically um, leave yourself a little gap on the side that you're gonna tack just to allow for that shrinkage so you can just rock you can rock this piece back very slightly so you've got a fraction of a gap like you've got on this back edge do your tacks as they shrink they'll actually pull that down and then you'll be left with your right angle again because if you were to go around and do the same thing on, on a, load of, uh, a load of legs without realising and then you go around and weld something up and then everything's welded up and then you come back to it and realise that nothing's actually at all square so say you're doing uh, building a table or something and you're trying to keep the top of it flat you want this to be a flat level piece when it's done and all welded together and you've got no way of fixturing it down or anything so if you imagine what a shrinking weld's going to do and how it's going to try and pull this um, if you're trying to keep this flat this way the last place the last place that you want to be welding first is on the top edge because as that shrinks it's going to be twisting it like this once once you've got your head around um, you know what the weld's actually doing while it's shrinking you can predict uh, which way the metal's going to go when you weld it you can look at it and think right well I don't want this to go this way so I'm not going to put it on the top you know if I do my first tack here and this opens up a little bit when I tack it it's not a big issue it's going to be easy for me to pull that back in tight if I do my tack here on the bottom the, and the bottom opens up underneath firstly you're not going to see that it's opened up because it's underneath secondly if you did realize it's going to be very hard for you to then close it back up just because of the way that is you know if you have to close up the inside you can pull it if the if the back edge opens up you can pull it that way um, so yeah you just got to think about it a little bit and uh, you'll work it out all right so if, if this was something i was making this was a dead square table whatever and i'm going to do a probably do a tack dead center inside or outside so i'm not doing it up here where it's going to risk twisting any of these pieces and then once i've got everything tacked up I'm gonna, the first welds I'm going to be doing are either going to be these outside corners or the inside corners. I'm not going to be welding along the top edges first. I want to leave them till last. So once you've got your inside and outside corners done, that's really going to hold everything square. So then when you come to do these and they're trying to twist it up this way, they're not going to be able to because you've got the uh, welds on the outside holding it square. So if, if you were making a table or something like that, you would want to get it all tacked up first. After you've tacked it, check again that everything is square. And then when you come to actually weld it, don't fully weld out one corner, then move on to the next, fully weld out that. Uh, you want to be like alternating around and like, you know, so the, the stresses and the movement, you're trying to counteract it like by welding one side moving over to the other side so that those stresses will counteract each other and then once the whole thing is cooled you'll hopefully end up with something that's you know close to where you want it to be so you might need to just add pieces removable you know pieces in to support things you know to brace stuff as you fully weld it so you can try and hold it in place as the weld cools and then once it's all cool you can cut pieces off because if you if you do a load of welding down one side of a piece of box anything it will shrink and it will bow that piece that way so what i've done in the past if it's something i can't clamp down 
is I'll actually just clamp something to the back of it. So whether that's like, uh, you know, a piece of RSJ or, so you could clamp obviously a longer, you know, something the same length as whatever it is, a piece of this, using it in that plane, not that plane, because obviously it's got less resistance to, for it to bend that way. You could just clamp it to the back, even temp, you know, weld it temporarily, and then when you're doing all your welding on this side, this outer piece is going to brace it all and keep it, keep it straight, and then you can cut it off after. It's something that is really easy to completely ruin a project by not anticipating what that weld's going to do. Um, so. Yeah, that's it for this one. Cheers for watching. See ya.